Hello and welcome to the 21st Century Work Life podcast, where we talk about leading remote teams, online collaboration, and working in distributed organizations. This podcast is brought to you by Virtual Not Distant, where we help managers and teams transition to an office optional approach. Find out everything we do over at virtualnotdistant.com and check out our show notes and pictures of our lovely guests over on the podcast page. It's great to have you here, listeners. Let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to episode 259 of the 21st Century Work Life podcast, also the first episode of 2021. So happy new year if you are listening indeed to this episode quite near its publishing time. My name is Pilar Orti, I'm the director of Virtual Not Distant and I'm delighted that you are here with us today. I have a lovely episode for you because I had the pleasure of speaking with Stella Huang, uh, who looks after talent and culture in Shield Geo. So I will bring you our conversation around virtual retreats in this episode. And I've also got some of my own thoughts, which I'll put after, <laughs> after that uh, conversation for you around culture and what culture in remote organizations, culture in hybrid organizations. What do we really mean when we talk about culture? Because there's uh, a lot of talk around it and I think we need to go back to basics. So I'll also tell you why I'm specifically thinking a lot about that at the moment. But again, I'll do that after Stella. So just first to say, if the topic of culture does interest you and if you do want to be more intentional about the kind of culture that you build in a in a team or in an organization, if you are at the beginning, at the inception, or whether you want to think and reflect on the culture that you have, then I also recommend you listen to episode 257 with uh, Robert Glaser from Acceleration Partners. And this was published in November 2020. It's just two episodes ago. Well, it might be three because we released a bonus also. So that might be of interest to you. Today, our wonderful uh, guest is, as I said, Stella Huang, and she looks after talent and culture in Shield Geo. I'll tell you a bit more about them in a second. And Stella was in Sydney, 11 hours apart when we recorded, and I spoke to her at the beginning of December 2020. And the reason why I thought it'd be interesting to share her her words <laughs> with you was that in November, for one of the What's Going On episodes, uh, Tim uh, Burgess from Shield Geo, founder and uh, yeah, co-founder, was talking about the virtual retreats that they'd had. So we talked about them in on the air for you to listen to back in November 2020. And afterwards, he said, you know, you really should be talking to Stella, who's been driving this throughout and who's the one who has an eye on on culture for the company. So this is what I did. And so our relationship, the relationship of virtual, not distant with Shield Geo is quite a tight one. They collaborated with us on a seven part series on connection and disconnection in remote teams and organizations. And that you can find all throughout the beginning of 2020. This seven episode, wonderful stuff by Brie Kajati. Uh, and also, as we said, well, I have lots of conversations with Tim. And Shield Geo themselves, they are a distributed company with employees spread all over the world. And what they do is that they look after the logistics of having an employee in different countries. So so actually, listeners, they might come in handy if you have found yourselves with an employee in a different country after the or during the epidemic or, or for the future. You, you can talk to them. And um, they are over different time zones. So this is important for a conversation. And you will see that their retreats are not one of things that happen once a year, even now. So I thought that was also an interesting point to bring to you. Before we start, I'll give you virtualnotdistant.com as a place for you to stay connected with us. We have a, a place you can sign up for a newsletter on that website, and we are also on LinkedIn. So that's Virtual Not Distant. But for now, <laughs> I will be back later. But for now, I started my chat with Stella, asking her how she started working for Shield Geo. 
Well, I actually celebrated my three-year anniversary yes. with Shield <laughs> just two days ago on the 1st of December. Very easy to remember. So, yes, I've been with Shield for three years already, although I did start half a year before that uh, as an intern while I was um, switching between jobs and roles. So I started off actually at Shield as an intern writing articles. So some of the articles, earlier articles, the listeners might be reading on our website were written by myself. Uh, and then from there, they were gracious enough to offer me a role as an implementation consultant at Shield. So essentially, I was client facing and helping our clients with onboarding their local employees. And I did that for a year until they asked if I would like to head up the talent and culture role at Shield, as we didn't have anyone doing that. So yes, that's what I've been doing in the last two years, uh, which has been very exciting. It's been last year alone, we added twice as many heads to our headcount last year, which was a very big feat. Um, and it, it's been a little bit slower this year, as I think we can all understand with the virus situation yes. around the world, but it's slowly starting to ramp up again. And, you know, I, I love talking to people and getting to know people. And I think um, that's definitely one of the most uh, interesting part of my jobs is talking to all sorts of different people from around the world. So when you started, uh, I'm going to go off script immediately because I, I didn't know the intern part. Sure. <laughs> so when you started as an intern, were you, um, because I know that Tim mentioned that uh, there used to be a common shared space, but were you in a distributed internship form or were you uh, with uh, anyone else physically located? No, I was actually in the office with Tim and a couple of other people in the Sydney area as well. Um, so it was very flexible. You know, we sort of came in and out whenever we pleased, which was really lovely to see everyone's faces. I think that's what people are missing. <laughs> I think it's, with the coronavirus, everyone's beforehand was wishing to work from home. And now that we're all working from home, we're wishing that we're back in the office interacting with people. So you sort of get best of both worlds, I think, in that situation. So we started off in the office, but now obviously the people in Sydney have transitioned to a full-time uh, remote working situation. Mm -hmm. So even in a distributed company, as we know, and you were using hubs also, that the, the, the virus changed, <laughs> changed the, yes, the setup. Sure. Nice. For so sure, sure. in uh, in the conversation with Tim, I had uh, some a, a few weeks ago, he started to tell me about this uh, virtual retreat that had been organized, that you'd organized, where he'd had a blast, basically, <laughs> the way it had been organized. Yeah. And I thought, well, uh, and I, I think maybe he suggested I, I talk to you more about it. So I think um, what we'll do is we'll, if we can go through the whole process of it and see what comes out as we sure. go along, let's start with the why. Why, why did you decide to do a, something that you would call a virtual retreat? Giving a little bit of background, I guess, and going back in time to <laughs> 20, uh, 2019, so not that long ago, actually. It feels like a while ago. <laughs> uh, we had our first retreat uh, and we did it in person when we were all able to travel internationally. Um, so we organized for everyone actually to meet in Phuket in uh, March of 2019. And that was a delight, to say the least. Uh, we managed to get, I think, around 22, 23 people um, to meet up in Phuket, though so, some weren't able to make it due to family situations, but that's okay. Uh, we managed to sort of bring them in as well virtually. Uh, they sat in on our sessions as well through video calls through Zoom. Um, but yes, we brought everyone together and it was just so nice to sort of see see everyone, you know. Um, we've worked with all of these people for such a long time. We see them on a weekly basis through video. It was just it's it's just a little bit different when you see them in person. You can touch them and <laughs> you know see see all the features they have on their face with clarity. Um, and sitting next to them, sitting next to people that you wouldn't necessarily sit next to or talk to on a regular basis when you're working remotely. Uh, I think everybody really enjoyed that. And um, we did a couple of team bonding activities and getting to know each other a little bit more. And I think that really helped build the trust uh, and relationships that we had uh, within the team. Uh, well, I say team, but I mean the company as a whole Yeah. because um, we're all one big team, you know. 
that's where it all stemmed from. We were going to do that again this year. We were from the success that we had last year at our inaugural retreat. We decided that it was going to be an annual thing as much as we could, <laughs> but unfortunately, COVID happened, and we thought, well, you know, what's another way that we can try and bring everyone together as best we can? And yeah, that's how these virtual sessions started. Help me with the geography. Where is Phuket? Phuket is in Thailand. It's a, okay. uh, on a little island in Thailand. It's in yeah, Southeast Asia. My geography is <laughs> terrible. So thanks for that. And then I wanted to ask you, and you said that you did uh, some activities to get to know each other better. Do you remember what were some of the things you did? What kind of information were you trying to surface that you thought would be useful? Because it was our first retreat, and it was the first time, like I mentioned, that a lot of people were maybe meeting each other or even perhaps speaking with each other because there are some teams that don't really interact very often. We wanted to introduce the teams. Um, and basically what we did was we got the teams to introduce themselves, who was involved in the team, what they actually do on a day-to-day -day basis so that everybody could sort of see how all the teams fit together and made the whole shield machine work. So that was really important. Tim, Duncan and I, Duncan is the other director of the company, other co-founder. Uh, the three of us presented some things. Duncan gave a presentation on how the company was started, how the company was founded, which I think a lot of people find interesting because it is quite a niche business mm. idea that we're involved in. Um, so I think a lot of people are really intrigued as to how they came about this idea and how they managed to set it all up. Uh, because we're such a diverse company in terms of, you know, not just time zones and countries, but backgrounds. You know, we've got people who were born in one country, lived in another country, traveled to another country, studied in another country. You know, we've got <laughs> such beautiful experiences that we want to sort of remember that, tap into that, but also at the same time be respectful of that. Um, and so that piece around diversity and inclusion um, remembering that because we do come from many different backgrounds and diversities, uh, that we have to remember our privileges and our biases and that when we talk to people, you know, we try to get to know them as people as opposed to presenting our assumptions and generalizations and perhaps offending people in the mm -hmm. process. So that's what Tim presented on. And for myself, It was actually the, one of the first projects that I did when I stepped into this role as head of talent and culture was clarifying our company values. Although we had values, they weren't clear and they weren't explicit. Uh, and so it was my job. One of the first projects that I did was to clarify those values. I announced those values at the retreat and we did some activities around what sort of behaviors are in line with those values and what behaviors aren't. Uh, and that we sort of started there. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, the other activities that we did were actually quite fun, you know, sort of salon games. Uh, I can't remember. We were using props like ping pong balls and red cups and, you know, trying mm -hmm. to build things as a team, play some silly games. Yeah, do something fun. Well, and do something that you can't do in the online space um, because exactly. it's that that sharing object, sharing space. That's the still, this is the, the thing that I still can't wait until we crack it, which maybe we won't in my lifetime, is the sense of space and the sense of proximity mm. and using space and creating connection with the space uh, between us. So those those activities, which are, which are, yeah, which are quite fun, but they're also getting us to connect in a different way. Our bodies are connecting in a different way to how they would behind the screen as well, which is something that that we we might miss. Uh, so yeah, so really nice uh, mix and um, and really interesting about the values. Can I? Sorry, listeners, you know I will go off on one. This is very interesting, and we, <laughs> we've talked in the in the show about values uh, and 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 how how we use values to shape culture and and why do we have values. So. Um, so that was the, your first, maybe that was your first step. You presented them, then you workshopped. Okay, so, okay, what does this really mean? You know, Stella has told us these things that, we, that are important, but what does that mean to me and my behavior? As curiosity, where did you take that process next? Is that something that you can share where, as in building around that? I, I, not, not necessarily at the retreat, but it's probably happened later. After we clarified what our values were, we wanted to make sure that it was, 
integral to everything that we do on a day-to-day basis. Um, I think sometimes you find there are companies out there that say that they have these values, but they don't really act on them or they don't keep it at the forefront of the things that they do. Over time, you sort of, you're not really sure what those values are and we didn't want that to happen. Um, So we wanted to try and integrate it into our daily lives as much as possible. We try and incorporate it in all sorts of different things in terms of HR and the role that I do. um, It's one of the first things that we test people on, I guess you could say, when they submit an application with us. So any candidates that are interested in joining us, it's one of the first things that we, we we have a values alignment interview. That's what we that's what we call it. And essentially, we ask them questions to sort of get to know a little bit more about who they are, what their values are as a person, and then essentially, yeah, if their values align with our values as a company. Otherwise, we we have a beautiful illustrator who and our marketing team has worked on creating little gifies and emojis mm-hmm. that are uh, that reflect these values. Uh, we've got a channel on Slack just for shout outs so that we can help spread the positive positivity and share everybody's everybody's well done things that yes, <laughs> yes. um on Slack for everyone to see and they can we can all respond with uh, these giffies and these uh, emojis that we've created just so that it's always there you know um we give people kudos for the fact that they have acted in line with our values. I love that the custom uh, custom made visual imagery that is unique yes. to that. That is really part of culture is the unique symbols and unique uh, vocabulary in, in whatever shape yes. or form. And, you know, it's not always about text also. Okay, well, thank you for that segue. I find it fascinating. And I hope that I'm sure listeners have also. So no uh, you had this great experience as your in-person retreat. And then you went, okay, we really wanted to do this, but we can't do it how we did it. So what happened next? We were thinking, well, what do we want to get out of, what what did we want to get out of our retreat this year? If we were to have come together, what did we want to achieve? Uh, But we've added to our headcount significantly. And I think it's getting harder and harder for people to know who's actually in the company. Mm -hmm. Um, As much as you try to sort of introduce them at the beginning on Slack and let everyone know that they've joined so, you know, we wanted to try and create a, a space where we were able to meet people from different time zones. So, you know, we've got three main global time zones. We've got the APAC region, we've got the EMEA region, and then we've got the Americas region. And we wanted to try and sort of mix and mingle that. Now, it's a little bit hard because sometimes you're literally 12 hours away from each other and there's going to be someone who's going to be asleep in bed at 3 a.m. in the morning while everybody's <laughs> having fun. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we try and rotate that so that we we always have a different mix of people. So that, that's been a little bit tricky to replicate virtually, but that was going to be important for us to give people the opportunity to talk to people that they may not necessarily talk to. We wanted to mix the teams around. So, not only time zone wise, but in the teams. Um, Like I mentioned before, sometimes there are teams that don't necessarily talk to each other very regularly, but we wanted to mix and mingle those people together so that they get to know who the other teams are. Mm -hmm. As well, you know, sort of general housekeeping things, um, getting to learn about each other a little bit more. Each virtual retreat that we've had has had a theme uh, and I think that's been really helpful for us to sort of have a look at what the company needs in terms of injecting some activity and sense of togetherness for us all Um, and that sort of helped guide us in terms of the activities or the topics that we want to try and cover during these virtual retreat sessions. And so how did they look then? Was it a day? Was it two days? What did it look like? The way that we organize it is actually just one hour per month. So we do a virtual retreat session once a month and it's only one hour. Or because we know that people are busy, we've got meetings going on, you know, we didn't want to take too much time out of everyone's days and say, okay, well, you have to block out half a day's worth of time for us to complete these activities. Uh, we want to just a, just a little bit so that it doesn't disturb people's normal work day, but at the same time, an opportunity for people to switch off their work because because the activities that we get people to do, it, it's, it's not possible for them to do that activity and 
try and do something else, do do some of their other work at the same time. Oh no, we must not do that. Really, <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, I I think we always have a tendency, right? Even especially in a remote working environment when you're working at home, there's always that you know, that pull, you're like, okay, well, I'll switch off my computer, but I've still got my phone. I can still check my Slack messages. Mm. I can still check Skype. You know, you're still all constantly always hooked on, but we wanted to sort of, although it was still work-related, we wanted to make it a little bit more fun where they could switch off and not have to w- worry about their normal day-to-day work mm-hmm. and get to know each other, make friends in the process. But did you say one hour a month you're doing? Yeah, one hour. Sometimes it runs over, yeah. <laughs> once over time, runs over time a little bit. But yeah, just one hour a month and we've been doing this now um december will be the seventh month that we'll yeah we'll be holding our seventh virtual retreat this year is everyone dialing it at the same time or do you have three different hours that different people can come to how how does it work yeah so we've got three different hours again those three different um time zones because also we didn't want to make it um outside of their normal work hours. I, we think that that's not very fair for them mm-hmm. to have to log off and then come back on a little bit later on. So when we try and organize it, we try and organize it for some time in the middle of their day. Uh, and so that's why, although we do want to, tr- we, we do try to sort of as much as possible, bring as many different people from other times as possible. It is hard when you're trying to make sure that Um, you know, you get them in the middle of their day. So we do have, yeah, three different sessions of the exact same topic. So for Tim and I and and Gina, who helps us with um, organizing these retreats, it's a little bit tiring because we have to run them three times in the one week. But, you know, a pleasure to see everyone's faces. So what happens then? Because it's very different to have one whole day all together in a physical space. It's got a very different feel to one hour a month online. So yeah. how do you plan those sessions? These sessions, Tim, uh, Gina and I, we plan uh, in the weeks leading up to that that retreat session that we book in every single month. And the activities that we do, we always open up with an icebreaker activity. And the icebreaker activity is always something that we get people to share a story about, whether it be where does your name come from or what does your name mean? I think those stories are really endearing Mm -hmm. and really lovely to share favorite toy when you were a child or what's your most prized possession that you have and then we ask people to run off we give them a minute to run off into their houses or their homes uh to find that item and it's like a bit of a show and tell Mm -hmm. so although we don't have the physical aspect of having everyone together Uh, we try to think of things that we wouldn't be able to do if we were in the same place. So, you know, getting people to run off and get their possessions that they have, you know, hidden away in their closets is something special and something you wouldn't be able to do in a physical retreat. So we start off with that and then we do an activity that is related to the topic that we're trying to cover for that month. And then we end off with a, with another little icebreaker, icebreaker activity or a fun, fun activity like bingo or something like that to, to lighten up the mood a little bit more at the end, keep it more fun. So that's usually how these retreats are structured in the in the hour that we have everyone. Yeah, and it's really condensed, isn't it? Because this is what you probably, if you had more time or if the retreat was over a day, for example, either in person or online, you'd have more time to get to know, then you have more content and then you have the wrap up. And this is, it's, uh, it's really nice because it's the same, you get, you get the same journey as a person when you're there. Uh, but it's condensed yeah. in 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 time, yeah. And Tim was mentioning, do you record these sessions? We do because um, you know some of the stories that come out or some of the experience that people share are really really interesting or really plucks at the heartstrings, and we want to share that with everyone. And you know, like I mentioned, people are wanting to interact with other people across the world, but it's just unfortunately somebody's sleeping at three a.m. in the morning. Yes. <laughs> Um, so they're probably going to wake up and say, okay, well, you, I, I had so much fun in my session with uh, Tim Steller and Gina. Um, I wonder what it was like for the APAC region. Um, you know, and they can, it's, it's not an obligation, you know, they don't have to watch it if they don't want to, but if they're interested in it, uh, we do leave it there for them to be able to access and watch. Cause I think it gives them an opportunity as well to get to know that person without actually being there with that person or talking to that person so that the next time they have a meeting or have a chat with that person, you can say, oh, 
know that your name meant this or I didn't know that, you know, oh, my grandma's also given me this object that I keep really dear to my heart. And it sort of helps to build relationships, I feel. And that's the purpose of what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And I really like that, that you're, you're giving us much space to the personal stories, which are what uh, some people need and want to connect with others. And also probably what's missing, because the, the, even, even in people who are working together, the day to day communication tends to be very work focused. So it's nice to have that space and for the company uh, to be giving that space mm. and saying, we're recording this because we think that this is important. To, to some of you. One of our company values is be human. And I think it's going, it's very hard to be human and, and get to know someone and have a human connection with them if you don't sort of try to get to know them, you know. And I think trying to facilitate it in a situation like this where it's more difficult virtually helps them become a little bit, you know, I'm not saying that we're robots or anything like that, but it yeah. helps to facilitate that, those, those conversations. Well, in the online space, you have to be deliberate. Whatever you want to achieve, you have to do it. You can't leave it to chance. Uh, and like you're doing, exactly. you've created a process around it. You've created the space around it. And that enables people then to to achieve that. Otherwise, it just doesn't happen uh, for, for all yeah. the reasons you've mentioned. Great. Well, I think this has definitely given me um, a picture of, of what that experience is like. I wasn't aware that this was happening once a month, which I think is really interesting. And I think it's another... It's another take on retreats and it's also where the online space is giving us an advantage because maybe we wouldn't be able to do this once a month, like have an in-person retreat. But actually, because we're online, we can be doing that. So is yeah. there anything else that you want to add, Stella, about either the process or, or how it's been going or where you think it's going in the future? Just something to, to, to wrap us up. Well, I guess, you know, the sort of we've, we've done this seven times now. Um, and every single time it's an experiment mm -hmm. because we wonder, we start off with a topic and we wonder, right, well, what activity can we do that is related to this topic that people are going to walk away with a message uh, at the end of the retreat session? And sometimes it doesn't work as well as we <laughs> want it to. <laughs> um, but that's the beauty of it, right? There are going to be things that you might not be able to do while you're in per when you're in person um, and there are obviously going to be some things that would be done better in person but it, it doesn't really matter people appreciate the fact that we have this space like you said where we're able to come together and not focus too much on work work uh, and and get to know each other a little bit better and have that human connection and I think for us anyway that's what was really important sort of getting to know each other sort of creating that company vision, making sure that everyone's on the same page, that we're all aligned with each other, because we all are just working together for the betterment of the company. In order to do that, you sort of have to create that place where people are able to get together and talk to each other, get to know each other and be human. Well, that is that's a good value to have, and especially when we are distributed, when we are mainly connecting through technology to remind ourselves to be human. And actually, even when we're not <laughs> connecting through technology, I think that's also a very good reminder. So thank you very much, Stella. If you want to look for her on LinkedIn, her name Stella, S-T-E-L-L-A, -L -L and her surname is Huang, H-U-A-N-G. So you can look for her on LinkedIn and we'll stick the link to her profile in the show notes. And of course, the company she works for is Shield G-E-O. Now, I did say, <laughs> I did say that I would come back and offer my thoughts because this conversation around values and culture and what we do around this when we transition online, mainly, mainly when we transition online, as many people have, or when we realize that a lot of our employees want to either work from home or find a different space to work from to the one that they used to mainly in the office or also if we have people coming into the office at different times. This begins to very much mirror a distributed company. Um, it's not the same as, for example, somewhere like Shield Geo, but we do have people who might not bump into each other as much, 
who might not see other people as much, who might not overhear conversations around them that are in the context of our organization as much. So what do we do? So at the moment at Virtual Not Distant, I'm well, I've been getting ready for this for a year and a half, but uh, then, yeah, the virus also affected us. We're developing a service called Podcasting for Connection, which is all about helping organizations keep their people connected through a different medium that's not an online meeting and not a physical space <laughs> meeting or whatever. So my mind is very much on seeing, okay, well, what is it that we need to be thinking about? And what might be different also to how we look after each other and after our organization's culture, if it's one we want to nourish? What What is different? So just give me a second. Just picked up my remarkable tablet because I started drafting I don't know if it was a blog post, a thought piece. I don't know what it is, but I got my remarkable and I wrote on it. And I'm going to share this with you before we publish it on the blog, which is not something I usually do, but hey-ho, <laughs> new year, new attitude, whatever. And I would love to hear your thoughts, um, virtualnotdistant.com, or if you want to send me an email, Pilar, P-I-L-A-R, at virtualnotdistant.com, or even Twitter, at Pilar or T would be a good place. So I've titled it, getting clear on organizational culture. And you might be tempted to ask yourselves, how do we keep our culture in a new remote hybrid setup? Forgive me for the bluntness, but that is not the right question. And before I go into why, let's recap what culture is. It's built on intangible values. And these values result in visible behaviors. We have symbols and artifacts which are used to reflect those values, which are used to, or they just happen to reflect them. And sometimes they facilitate those behaviors. We have rituals and shared experiences which reflect those values. Sometimes we have some values and then we have rituals and shared experiences which go against them. So that's another question. It's another piece of reflection. Now, the behaviors that follow our values might not be transferable to the online space. They might need adapting. They might even need scrapping. They might not help us anymore. Those behaviors that reflect certain values might not be useful in the online space. And you might need to adopt new behaviors and practices to live your organization's values in the online space in a hybrid setup whatever you want to call it, in an office optional way, which we used to speak to before the pandemic. If your values are important, if having the right culture for your organization is important, then this transition can provide the space to rediscover what your values mean to people now, how they engage with them now, how they can live them now. Once upon a time, for example, this is an example of how things might have changed. Once upon a time, we value flexibility in the workplace meant that people could run errands during the day, that they could come in late into the office without anyone batting an eyelid. Now, that value might extend to new HR policies like, well, we offer membership of co-working spaces. We deliver training both online and in the co-located space. We make it okay to add time offline in our calendar without anyone asking what that means. We cannot ignore that some of our people might have changed profoundly during 2020. So this is another point which I haven't seen many people associate with culture and that conversation because their priorities in life might have changed. Even their values might have shifted. Uh, as a result of having had an unexpected and unfamiliar experience. So there's also a question of, do we want to accommodate this change? And there are no good or right, oh, this is not yes or no, and there are no, no right or wrong answers. We just need to be asking ourselves these questions. And if the change has brought benefits with it, do we want to shift ever so slightly to allow our culture to shift ever so slightly with them? The shift to the online space, so as our people have worked in a different way, they will have been amplified, uh, sorry, they will have amplified what matters. They will have amplified or even given rise to behaviors that are not in line with the environment we'd like to create. This is, we've, <laughs> there's been lots of unexpected stuff happening. 
So when people ask if remote organizations can have culture, well, the answer is always yes. But they can have a culture of collaboration, or they can have a competitive culture. They can have a hierarchical culture. They can have a transparent culture. It's not a question of whether they can have culture. It's a question of what cultures work best in that space. I think the question that people are really asking when they are talking about this culture piece sometimes, what they're asking is whether there can be a connected workforce and can we see sets of behaviors that reflect the sense of belonging to an organization. What people are afraid of, I think, is not a lack of culture. It's an emerging culture of disengagement. It's a culture of silos. It's a culture of disconnection. It's still culture, but it might not be the culture we want. So that's as far as I've got <laughs> with my notes. And I really hope that we can start to really put some meat into this conversation, that we can put some meat into the thinking that we share around this conversation, because we've got to go back, pull back, what do we mean by culture? And this uh, piece actually came through, uh, well, the day after I spoke to Teresa Sigilito Holema, who, whose expertise is actually about geographical culture, but she's thinking about this also a lot. And Tim Burgess uh, from Shield Geo, we, the three of us met to talk. This is what we do in the online space sometimes. And we, we did talk a lot about this. And it really, um, Tim said, well, when you're thinking about how you want to preserve your culture, you've got to be thinking about what is it we don't want to lose. So for some organizations, it is going to be tight collaboration. And of course, that is difficult when we come into the online space, because we might think that the way in which we preserve that culture in the co-located space was through meetings. That's not going to work as well in the online space. So what we want to preserve are not the meetings. What we want to preserve is the sense of collaboration. So how do we do that? Uh, if we want, um, again, going back to Stella and the value of be human, well, in again, in the co-located space, that might have meant having lunch together, um, doing uh, non-work things together, or bringing an aspect of our personal connection into our work. Well, how do we do that in the online space? Or if we have a hybrid setup, how do we do that? When do we ask people to come and be in the physical space together to do what and why? So there is not one way of having a remote culture. <laughs> it's really about how you want your company to be when they also have an online space. Now, if you want a culture that embraces remote work, that's a different story. So I'm going to leave this now. I really could go on forever. <laughs> you know this. Um, but I really, uh, well, one, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear from you, Pilar at virtualnotdistant.com or virtualnotdistant.com. We have a contact form there too. Um, it might be too long for Twitter, but I'd be delighted at Pilar or T. And yeah, and also just to let you know, if you want to have a more structured conversation around this, well, Facilitation and podcasting are going to be at the heart of Virtual Not Distant moving forwards. So you know where we are. All right. I think I'm going to leave you with the stock outro. Thank you for listening to the end of the episode. A big thank you for listening to the 21st Century Work Life podcast produced by Virtual Not Distant. If you have something to add to the conversation, let us know through the contact form over at virtualnotdistant.com. I have been your host, Pilar Orti, and I'm signing off now. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, enjoy. Enjoy.